Tonight it's going to be a, like, a really nice, relaxed, casual evening. Great food, some tasty wines, and I think first thing to remember, this is a sort of a, a night to sit back, relax. I'm not going to sit here and melt your faces off with a whole lot of technical information because this is more of a you know, just a sort of drinking and eating rather than a, an official sort of tasting. So we're just going to relax and, and have a good time. Uh, like was mentioned before, if you've got any questions during the evening, just come and chase me down, and I'll, I'll answer anything. It's that's no dramas. Um, I can tell you a little bit about Cloudy Bay. Who's heard of Cloudy Bay before? Yes, no, yes, okay. Yep. Um, so I guess, like was said before, we're um, quite lucky, I guess. Um, Cloudy Bay's had some great success over the 25 years that we've been making wine down in Marlborough. And it is actually our 25th birthday year this year, which in the world of wine doesn't really mean a hell of a lot when you look at countries like Spain and Italy and France. But uh, certainly in our region, it is uh, a bit of a milestone. We were one of the first five wineries in Marlborough, which is on the northernmost part of the southern island. Um, and I guess in many respects, we were kind of in the right place at the right time with the right wine. And people got quite excited about our Sauvignon back in 85. But we've consistently, I think, delivered um, over the last 25 years and, and really we do work very hard on dotting the I's and crossing the T's and trying to trying to do the right thing and really hit the mark every year on year. Um, so Sauvignon is really what we're best known for but in saying that there's a hell of a lot more to the story of Cloudy Bay than just Sauvignon Blanc. Uh, in 1987 we started making sparkling wine and uh, got involved with Verve Clico, the champagne house around about 1990 so it's been a big part of our history and, and I guess uh, lineage. So the first one you had tonight was uh, Polaris non-vintage sparkling wine. And it's a really cool climate um, environment to grow grapes in, in Marlborough in New Zealand. And so we get great acidity in the, in the grapes, which is really the key to making good, good sparkling wine. Um, sparkling wines should really have a, a lovely sort of kind of depth of flavor, but also a real lightness on the palate. And I think that wine really shows that well. It's mainly Chardonnay, which is certainly a variety that gives that really sort of delicate, light, um, sort of citrusy element to the wine uh, with a little bit of Pinot Noir in it that gives it a bit of carpentry or, or structure. Um, so yeah, that's, that's uh, where that wine is all about, or what that wine's all about. The next two wines are going to be Sauvignon based. The first wine which you have now is the 2010 Sauvignon, which has just been released around about a week and a half ago. And this wine's really all based around vineyard flavours and picking over a, a series of different ripenesses, which really what we're trying to do is capture some nice green herbal, uh, sweet herbal tones. Uh, the first dish has got the salsa verde in there, which I think is going to be a really good match because we want some of those Natalie characters in the wine, uh, not sort of green capsicum-y characters, that's getting a little bit too green and nasty. Then capture some nice citrusy notes and then push up into those tropical tones that Sauvignon can have. Um, our wine's got a nice, I think, restraint to it. It's a lovely balanced wine with really fine acidity, which, which makes it nice and refreshing. And that, that wine's really built around a nice acid core, which gives it its structure and kind of cut across the palate. The second wine, uh, that's going to be paired up with the meal, or third wine for the evening, I should say, is another Sauvignon Blanc. Has anyone heard of a wine called Tococo before? Yes, no, yeah. people? Okay, so a totally different beast. The first, the first Sauvignon that we've got now is all stainless steel fermented, and really my job is to put on my white gloves and handle the fruit really delicately and not really build a lot into it from 
a winemaking perspective. It's a showcasing the vineyard. The second wine, Tococo, which is the Māori name for, for Cloudy Bay, um, is barrel fermented in really old French oak. We're not adding any yeast. It's a really hands-off way to make wine or an old world way of making wine. And that wine's really all about savouriness and texture. It has more of a memory of the vineyard. So there's definitely fruit there. But rather than being sort of upfront and punchy like this wine that we've got, um, it's a little bit more subdued and characters like lemon thyme, uh, nectarine, pink, pink grapefruit, ginger spice, uh, dried herbs, that sort of thing. So a really, really different wine and I think challenges the, uh, the kind of concept of what a Marlborough Sauvignon Blanc looks like. Uh, and it's a wine that I'm pretty keen on making and also drinking. And uh, it's a really great food wine because it, it does have that textural element. So when we've got dishes like we're going to have tonight that, that have that textural element to them, not only just a flavour sort of uh, side to them, it should bounce off, um, bounce off the wine really well. So I want to sit down and let you get back to your conversation. Scream out um, if you've got any questions. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.